What's good, y'all? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to another F1 Films. Lovely, lovely Thursday. Now, I want I, I need to check out the penalty system in F1. It's getting pretty crazy and ridiculous between Verstappen and Lando Norris. These two have been going at it like some freaking pit bulls, and it is absolutely crazy. But do listen. Do I think it's probably been one of the best parts of the season? Yes. I think for so long we needed something like this back in F1 because Verstappen was just swiping the bed, just swiping the floor the last few years winning. But now we have a potential challenger in McLaren to potentially overcome that, which has led to Lando and Verstappen. Now, do I think Verstappen has kind of been a bit over the top, you could say? Yeah. Yeah. But has been good to watch. Hell yeah. It has been very, very good to watch. So I need to check out the whole penalty system because the whole penalty system because I do feel like Verstappen probably deserves more penalty points on his on his, you know, points tally, whatever. That's just me. But shout out to Rick's F1. All oh, Craig was in big, big time. And without further ado, uh Let's start. In today's society, every single one of our actions bear consequences, whether Next. it be negative or positive. And most of these consequences are fleshed out through the legal systems around the world. In the US, you jaywalk, you get a $250 fine. You park illegally, your car gets towed. You speed in a school zone, you get an even bigger fine. Facts. And if you pay all your taxes, the IRS doesn't shoot you 12 times in the back of the head. Legal systems around the world have allowed us to create civilized societies. However, not without flaws. Similar offenses can lead to two completely different sentences. Judges sometimes don't follow the rule set and just do their own thing. And sometimes a person who stole millions of dollars can get less of a sentence compared to someone who stole a slice of pizza. I wish I was making this up. F1's penalty system <laughs> is surprisingly relevant oh, he's for to real. the legal systems we have in the world. Legal systems enforce rules and keep society civil, while F1 does exactly the same, but on track for the 10 teams and 20 drivers, ensuring safety and that no other driver would dare to break the rules. Except if you're this guy. I swear to God, Kevin Magnuson... Hey, shout out K-Mag. Like I said, I, po I posted in the uh, post yesterday. Shout out K. Megan Hawks. Last few races, they've been racing well, performing well. It's been very good under the radar. I had none until I was racing my F1 stuff last night. But I have been seeing during like the races, like, okay, I see it. I see it. Obviously, both of them, I'm not going to be back at Haas next year, but drives like there's a bomb somebody tell my boy came back man f1's penalty system sharing the same positives that a legal system provides it also carries along its negatives similar cases leading to two completely different sentences judges not following their principles and completely disproportionate like music, punishments you know, are just as present in f1 stewarding as they are in a courtroom and it all stems from this consistency the FIA has no idea what this is. You know that feeling that you get when you're about to blast through a red light? Not that I would know or anything. Since I am quite the law-abiding citizen. But sometimes when you do it, you get that gut feeling that you might just get away with it. Jesus. Until you get slapped with like a billion dollar fine. But let's say you receive a $300 fine for it. Ooh. This is definitely not a number out of my personal experience, but this is fair since it's the standard fee in the city that you're in. But at least that's until your friend got caught for doing the exact same thing, potentially worse. But for him, he only gets a $50 fine. Similar cases, completely different penalties. This was exactly the case with Alonso's 22nd penalty in Australia. George Russell was chasing Alonso in the final lap of the race and since George was getting closer and closer Alonso decided to apply his racecraft. Braked earlier into a corner to prioritize exit, causing George to get dirty air, losing his car and making it do an exercise. This is what we call the side plank. Really good for your obliques. But after that the stewards gave Alonso a 20 second penalty for erratic driving. If you can't already tell, this is bullshit. We can argue all day yeah, about whether what? or not Alonso was in the wrong because this is a relatively gray area, but inconsistency is the reason why I think this penalty is complete ass. We don't Hold up. So hold on. So my boy got in trouble for dirty air. For dirty air. He didn't do nothing. That's crazy. That's uh Hey. You don't even have to look That's as far back as 2005, where Alonso applied the same strategy of breaking soon to prioritize exit out of a corner. Schumacher right behind him, easy mess. Slowing down in the in the narrow parts of the circuit, so Michael was not able to pass me, and, and then accelerating in the, in the high speed uh, sections. And yeah, it worked quite well. 
But as early as Abu Dhabi 2023, where he did the exact same thing to Lewis Hamilton, where he braked even sooner, and the FIA didn't give two shits about it. Going back to the court case, it's awfully similar. Alonso got penalized here, but not here. Just as how your friend only got a $50 fine, but you got $300. A huge inconsistency between both the judge and the FIA. If the FIA were to be consistent, since nothing was done in Abu Dhabi, then nothing should be done in Australia. Similar infringements need to receive similar penalties not completely different ones. Fact. So, erratic yeah. driving, yes, from Alonso. But is that consistent with what's happened before? The answer is no. But still, even with such a basic concept to follow, F1 and legal systems around the world continue to make the same mistakes. And it's because judges fail to follow the basic foundation of the legal system, standardized fines. Similar to how FIA stewards fail to follow the basic foundation of F1's penalty system, offense, over outcome. Just do your right job. Just do your right thing. Based on outcome. At least that's what they claim they do. And this is also bullshit number two. Unlike the real world where if you drink and drive and kill two people, you won't just be charged for driving under the influence. You can go to jail. But also, you guessed it, the murder of two people. Yeah, However, in a lot of somebody. sports, only the offense would be punished, not the outcome. And this is what the FIA claims to have followed for so many years. Show my boy Izzy, man. Show my boy Izzy. Was not expecting instance, that. Michael Massey bitch-ass motherfucker. But this statement is more than correct, and it's for good reason. The concept of penalties being based by the offense, not the outcome, is something a lot of new fans don't understand. Take Lewis Hamilton's penalty in Silverstone 2021, where he got 10 seconds for his collision with Max Verstappen. After Max crashed, some fans went, how is that not a disqualification? Lewis just gave Max a one-way ticket to meet Jesus. And while a disqualification might sound fair, it isn't. The penalty given to Lewis was judged by looking at the incident between him and Max up until the point they make contact and everything after is no, irrelevant. Crazy. penalizing the offense and not the outcome provides a more consistent way of how stewards approach a penalty if they did things based on outcome then similar cases of offenses can have completely different penalties so it's really good to see that f1 has been following this very consistent and reliable foundation for making decisions mm. Except F1 hasn't been following this consistently at all. Going back to Alonso, the reason why this wasn't investigated and this was is because the outcome was taken into consideration and it just so happened to be George Fumble kissing the wall. Now I'm not trying to defend Alonso. What he did here was definitely in the gray area, but I heavily doubt that he would have gotten that 20 second penalty if George didn't crash. The outcome being the F1 car side plank was definitely a huge factor behind the FIA's the decision plank to is penalize crazy. him because he did the same thing just three races ago and got out scot-free it's so painful to see how f1 only follows this foundation for lewis and silver now if they do not get charged because russell went when he did to russell russell spun out but in, in the other case he didn't spin out i think that's what he said like the situation like i guess the situation like the outcome Stone, but completely throws it out the window for Alonso. By looking at Alonso's penalty in Australia, how stewards judge an incident is wildly inconsistent, which results in similar cases having two completely different results. This is because the whole foundation behind how penalties are judged, being offenses rather than outcomes, can be completely obsolete the moment there's a crash. Mm. Man, this is some bullshit! Boo this man! <laughs> <laughs> Does the punishment fit the crime? A question often asked by the public when a judge carries out a sentence or F1 fans when the FIA stewards give out a penalty. Mm -hmm. This is because punishments can be extremely disproportionate. In F1, sometimes drivers who speed in the pit lane can get the exact same penalty as a driver ramming someone off. And similar to the case I mentioned earlier, a man gets more years behind bars for allegedly stealing a slice of pizza compared to a woman who stole five million dollars. Holy shit. Disproportionality is a flaw both yeah, in the that's legal crazy. system and F1. One's That's crazy. Share. But for F1, everyone blamed disproportionate penalties on the five second penalty standard. Years ago, a lot of people hated the five second penalty being the standard for most penalties in F1, ranging from corner cutting to overtakes off track, saying that it's not proportionate to the offense, specifically being too light, since the drivers can easily build like a 10, five 15. second gap from the car behind. Which brings us to the introduction yeah. of the 10 second penalty being the yeah, new standard saying. in 2020. Five is crazy. Ever I don't know why that was even this, a point. 
straight up glazing it. This new system was covered in white sticky goo. Holy shit. All of a sudden, with just this one change, everyone started saying that the punishment crazy, finally bro. fits the crime. Saying, oh, you know, the 10 second penalty makes things so proportionate now. It all makes sense. F1 penalties are fairer than ever. Shut your bitch ass up. The FIA may have upped the standard of penalties to 10 seconds, but this doesn't solve any disproportions. F1's penalty system is still so incredibly unbalanced, where it feels like you're playing an FPS shooter where a grenade does the exact same damage as getting shot by a fucking tank. And it mostly has to do with hey, that's facts. Points. That's a facts. If you play card, if you know, you know. Points, they will receive a race ban. Let me present to you all the unbalanced penalties we've seen in 2024. Even with the new 10 second penalty standard. Logan Sargent got two penalty points for accidentally overtaking under the safety car. Many argue this should have been zero penalty points, since the reason for penalty points is to specifically punish dangerous behavior from drivers during racing, exactly. not for procedural infringements that could just be put on the team anyway. But where this gets fucked up is that Lance Scholl gets the exact same penalty points for ramming into Daniel Ricciardo and that ruining been his like race. Ten. Fernando Alonso gets more than that for barely any contact with Carlos Sainz in the China Spring. Yeah, so while really. all of this was happening, Lewis Hamilton got absolutely no penalties for going in like a torpedo oh, in the yeah, 2024 Miami Spring Race. <laughs> the biggest question I have after looking at all of these cases is how does this get the same penalty points as this? And how does that get more penalty points than that? This is how F1's penalty system works according to the FIA's decisions. As you can see, this is definitely very balanced. Going in like the torpedo Danny Kivy yet into turn one gets you no penalties while overtaking under the safety car is just as bad as ramming into another driver and if you're fernando alonso get ready to be tortured and burned alive the way these incidents were handled by the fia is absolutely disgusting they're the ones who deserve the 10 second penalty or 10 fucking years in hell so without further ado no, no. allow me to get this dog shit off your screen and show you just how things should have been handled now this might not seem fair in your eyes, but it does for mine. All cases here receive a 10 second penalty, but Logan gets zero penalty points. Alonso's contact with Carlos along with Lewis's Miami torpedo receives the same two points since they can be interpreted as racing incidents. And Lance Stroll's collision with Daniel Ricciardo gets Shipping three penalty team. points since it could have been avoided if Lance just wasn't busy staring at the corner instead of the car that's actually in front of him. Obviously, this is very debatable. Some of you guys might say that this doesn't deserve a penalty at all, and maybe this doesn't as well. And I could very much understand where you guys are coming from. But at least what I'm trying to do here is make things consistent. Scale the numbers higher or lower, it remains the same. <laughs> Similar cases can end in two completely different ways. The way decisions are made can overlook the rules and foundations set in the first place, and punishments will not always fit the crime. Whether it be in F1's penalty systems or the world's legal systems, the more you start to notice these inconsistencies, you'll start to realize just how broken they really are. The broken nature That's of bad. these two systems that were created because of inconsistencies have the potential to create distrust. People mm. won't know what's right or wrong, F1 fans either, and drivers will doubt what counts as hard racing and what doesn't. And if an organization as big as the FIA keeps making these mistakes left and right, penalties will soon lose their purpose. If F1 wants to fix its broken penalty system, it has to dig deep. Like in every other sport, corruption, favoritism, and biases are just as present as they are in Formula 1. One of the stewards who decided Alonso's 22nd penalty in Australia was Johnny Herbert, the same man who Alonso insulted years ago. You're not going to retire. You're That's not good. A champion. Good to have you. Been, you ended up as a commentator because you're not a true champion. Mate. If that doesn't tell you something, <laughs> I don't know what will. F1 really needs to fix its penalty system. One way they could do that is to always follow the foundation of basing penalties on offenses, since whenever they don't do this, something messes up. And they should also review and make changes to their penalty proportionality, allowing for the punishment to fit the crime. But before I end this video, that I have one just, thing left to say. Oh if F1 God. decides to make changes oh. and the FIA truly take things to the right direction, there's one penalty they need to keep and continue to give. And that is a five second penalty for Ocon. Bro, the fuck you mean five second penalty for Ocon? Huh? Man, that shit is outdated as fuck, bro. D dude, then what is it supposed <laughs> I can't lie, Ocon, his five second penalty, it's just typical Esteban Ocon. I can't even say much more than that. It's typical Esteban Ocon. It's just, uh, it's him. <laughs> it just, it, it just fits him. But I will say though, the FIA being this bad and it's not being talked about a lot more in terms of, of the whole penalty system. It needs to be better. 
It needs to be better. It needs to be better. What's going to happen this weekend? <laughs> What's going to happen this weekend? Hope you guys did enjoy the video. As always, don't forget to watch the video and sub as well. Take care. Stay amazing. Your boy is out. Peace.